Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to the Mentally Ill Filmmaker Diary. Um, so for those of you just joining us, this is a podcast that I wanted to do daily, five days a week, but I decided I'm going to dump, take it down to three. Uh, Mondays are going to be Mindful Mondays, where I talk about my experiences with my mental health, as well as some of the lessons that I'm learning and trying to expand my mind a little bit. And hopefully in the lessons that I'm learning, they provide value to those who ever discovers this and listens to it. Um, on Wednesdays, I do a live YouTube Run uh, screenwriting process where I take uh, the time that I do have to write and just write live with you guys for about a half an hour to an hour. Um, and then Fridays is where I talk about what I'm learning as a new founder for the company that I'm running um, and how those lessons might be useful to you as a creative building something. Uh, and so, yeah, that's what I'm aiming for. But today, jumping into the mentally, uh, the mindful aspect of things. I want to talk about um, the last few days, last week, I was having some issues with my, my wife and a friend of mine, both of which who were, I would say, complaining about me every day uh, aspects of, of their lives. And I have a really, really big problem with complaining. And I know that in culture, in our culture, especially in like hustle culture, it's, it's, the idea of like complaining is terrible and anybody who complains is blah, 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 blah. But I'd like to offer a different perspective on the idea of complaining or one that I found. Um, so when I really dug down into why, why does complaining bother me? And it reminds, it's because it reminds me of whining. And when I think about whining, I think about children. And so when I start thinking about children, I start to think, when you speak to a child about why they're whining, you want to ask them, how is what you're doing right now going to get you what you ultimately want? And as you, if you have kids or have spent any significant amount of time with kids, you recognize that at the end of the day, your kid is facing or dealing with some very, very big feelings. And they lack the ability to articulate what the problem is and how, what the solution may be for the problem that they're having. And I was listening to a conversation by Alex Ormazi, who was saying that as we grow, the only thing that really grows about us as humans is our ego. We usually stay in that childlike uh, way of processing information and dealing with, with, with the world. Um, and I started to think, dealing with my wife and, and not dealing with, but interacting with my wife and, and interacting with my friends, that what if that was the case? What if, what if we never really grow out of that way of dealing with things, that childish way? And what if what my wife is complaining about is more her having all of these big feelings about a problem and her inability to articulate exactly what the problem is or how to solve it? Not in the sense of that she's unintelligent, not in the sense of that she doesn't have the ability or that my friend is unintelligent, but more just they don't have the, they can't find the words to figure out this problem. Because as a child, you think about when you don't have the words for a problem, the problems that you have as a toddler are, you know, you want more juice or you want food or you want to watch TV or the iPod, uh, iPad or whatever. Like those are things that a toddler's, those are the extent of a, pro or, you know, or you need to be changed or something like that. Um, and those are like the extent of a child's problems. But then as you grow, your problems become more complicated. They become more, more challenging and the solutions are even more complicated than the problems themselves. And as an adult, when you start to face, if you're still thinking in a way, processing things the way a toddler does, sometimes you're going to come up against problems that are super complicated, that force and stir inside of you a lot of complicated feelings. And sometimes you're going to lack the ability to articulate the solution to it, or even articulate what you think the problem actually is. And when you start to think about people in that perspective, when I started to look at my wife in that perspective, my friend in that perspective, it changed the way that I saw it. I no longer saw the whining as a bad thing. It was more of your inability to articulate exactly what you need at this exact moment or how to solve the problem that you're stuck with. And you, instead of saying, I don't know how to solve this, you are telling me all the things that are wrong. And 
while this isn't the most ideal way of getting to the bottom of a solution, we can't control how other people choose to express themselves, right? This is what I realized. Well, for me, I don't believe in complaining. If I see a problem, I like to tell a person, this is the problem that I'm having and I don't know how to solve it. Can you help me do that? That's how I typically will handle a problem. But not everybody does that. Sometimes a person's way of saying, I have a problem and I don't know what to do about it. Can you help me figure it out? Or even if I don't need you to help me figure it out, can you at least, this is the problem that I'm having and I just want to talk to you about the problem I'm having. And some people don't have the ability to do that. So instead it comes out like, it should be this way, or things should be that way, or it shouldn't be this way, or this isn't fair, or I can't stand it. That is how it translates. What they're, all they're really saying is I'm having a problem, I don't know what the solution is, and I need somebody to listen to me about this, or provide me with a solution to the problem. So, as somebody who practices stoicism, one of the things that I've I've tried to master is the idea not even master, but try to move with, is the idea of you cannot control anything outside of, you can't control anything outside of your sphere of control. So the only thing that I am capable of truly controlling is my reaction to the things that happen in the world, uh, the world or to me or whatever. That is all I can do is control my reactions to it or my actions in regards to it. That's, that's pretty much the only things I can control. And when you live under that mentality, it becomes frustrating when you see other people who don't. And the key to that that I'm discovering is learning that not everybody is on the same path as you and learning to embrace that, learning to embrace the radical acceptance that not everybody is going to be doing the same thing you are or on the same journey that you are on. Some people don't want to read books. Some people don't want to start a business. Some people don't want to um, educate further, gain further education. Some people don't want to read past a headline. Some people don't want to um, research anything beyond the video they saw on TikTok, whatever. Everybody has their different things, and, and it's all based on the journeys that they've taken. Their traumas, their experiences have dictated what becomes important to them, what their values are. And at the end of the day, when you discover that your values or the way that the information of the things that you value may be different than other people and learning to radically accept that fact, that's when you got, that's when you tr it starts to become a little less a little less frustrating not that it's completely not that like all the frustration is completely gone but it becomes less less frustrating when you deal with people that are, are complaining so if you have a client that's complaining or a partner that's complaining or a boss or employee um that's constantly complaining i think to look at it through the lens of this is a person who is who, who is lacking the the ability to articulate what the problem is, and I and what how I can be of service to them is figuring out how to do that. So my solution to this now has become when my wife brings to me a complaint, I say, "How can I help? How can I help you with this thing that you're struggling with?" I first try to get an understanding of it, so I tell her this, as you've said to me, this is what I think the problem is that you're dealing with. Am I right, wrong, uh, my way off? And then I get some clarity. So once I have the clarity on what they're upset about, then I say, how can I help you in solving this problem? Do you know? Um, do you want to put our heads together and figure out a solution? Whatever it may be. And that's how I try to deal with it. And I think that's the best way to deal with people who are complaining. I think another thing is to reframe it. Stop calling it complaining. My wife prefers it to be called venting. And I think that's a fair, a fair, um, I think that's a fair change of, of it all. Um, or fair labeling. But whatever you want to call it, I think calling it complaining becomes invalidating. It becomes invalidating to the other person. And validating the fact that what they feel is genuinely, um, genuinely tough for them. Really, really big. Really, really complicated. And so that 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 to say that it's just complaining is kind of shrugging it off. It kind of is, it's dismissive of how the person feels. And in realizing that, it's helped me to sort of change that. And I hope that it can help you to do the same. Um, when a person is complaining, it's because or when a person complains to you, vents to you, whatever you want to call it. It's that person trusting you with their concerns, their fears. They're trusting you. Uh, they are feeling that you are a person they can go to when they feel that their world is upside down. And when you look at it like that, you 
that annoyance becomes gratitude. Grateful that you see me. I'm a person in your life that you see as a person who can help you. This is completely different from people who get on social media and complain for anybody and everybody to see about everything all the time. That's a completely different thing. And even in that, though, they're, st- the, 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 they're dealing with something and they, they don't know how to articulate the solution. It's probably still the case, but it's less about them trusting and more about people garnering sympathy, which is a whole different thing. But when somebody comes to you and is complaining about stuff, it's because they trust you. It's because they recognize that you are um, somebody they can talk to about stuff. So when you start to think about that, I think it really does help. So I hope that in my lesson that I've learned uh, this week about learning to reframe complaining and how to better deal with it, learning that first you reframe what it's called, then you get clarity on what the problem is, and then you ask, how can I help? How can we help fix this problem for you? If not fix it, at least make it more manageable. And if you do that, I think you'll find that your frustration with the people around you who complain will decrease. And I think that your strength in the bonds of the people that are connected to you. Anyway, that's all that I got for Mindful this Monday. And um, we'll talk again on Wednesday. Thanks.